What's up, everybody? This is Fred Ricciani of TSC Gaming here to give you guys my thoughts on Rugby 18 on PlayStation 4. This game is also available on Xbox One and PC. It was developed by Echo Software, distributed by Big Ben Interactive. And I do not have high hopes for this game because it is the sequel to the much maligned Rugby 15 from a few years back that was universally panned. Full disclosure, I never played that game. I've never played a rugby game. I'm not even a rugby fan. So I was excited to get my hands on this game because I wanted to see what the fuss was all about. I've seen video clips of rugby. It looks entertaining. A lot of our subscribers are from Europe and absolutely love rugby. So I was pumped up to actually play a real, authentic rugby game. But unfortunately, that enthusiasm did not last. When I first pulled up the menu screen for Rugby 18, I noticed something straight out of PS2. I thought Pro Evolution Soccer had outdated menus for sports games. Man, oh man, did Rugby 18 outdo itself. Now, as far as content-wise, you have a few different options. You have local play, online play, weekly challenges, my squad, which is very similar to my team in EA Sports titles or my club in PES, and you have the career mode. And I gotta say, uh, they don't really differ that much from each other. The premise is simple. You pick your team, you play some games, you may deal with some game-breaking glitches, and you go from there. In terms of leagues and team selections, you've got plenty to choose from. You have teams from Aviva Premiership Rugby, Pro 14, and a number of national teams. But that's where kind of the fun stops, because when you actually play the game, you'll see that it's not really user-friendly at all. If you're somebody that's coming in cold, has never played a rugby video game, or is not familiar with the game of rugby at all, this game does not do a great job of educating you. In fact, I think it does the minimum required to educate you about what's a ruck, what's a try, what's a kick, so on and so forth. They do have some in-game prompts when you're playing this game if you want to set the tutorials option to have it pop up whenever you're playing the game. But the problem with this is it froze my game multiple times to the point where I had to exit, where I had to just simply turn off my freaking PS4 and then turn it back on, which of course is never convenient. And this occurred even after I downloaded the patch at launch, which is very disappointing itself. As for the gameplay within the actual game modes, man, there's a whole lot of rucking. Scoring comes at a premium. I did try to play around with the difficulty settings, but the AI was just pretty damn difficult. When I did finally make a try or make a successful kick, it was awesome, but I felt like it was way, way too hard. I'm somebody that's not a huge soccer fan, not a huge hockey fan, but I've played multiple hockey and soccer sports games on Xbox One, PS4, PC. I've been able to do tutorials and everything, and eventually I got the hang of it, but for whatever reason in this game, it just made it difficult. The overemphasizing of rucks was just frustrating. A ruck, a ruck, another ruck. Hey, let's, let's do another ruck. The AI was really difficult at times. Other times it was super easy. There was a lot of inconsistency, even with being on the same difficulty level. And it sails between the posts. And that's the second try in the match for this. In terms of the game modes other than local play and online, they're pretty much similar. The only difference is in my career mode, you essentially just play in your career, play a bunch of dull games, hopefully don't get any game-breaking glitches, and eventually get to the promised land. When you get to my squad, it's very similar to Ultimate Team in EA Sports games. If Ultimate Team had the most unuser-friendly interface possible and was dull as hell, and boy, this was dull to the point where I just said, you know what? I'm tired of doing this. I'm just going to autofill my team and play as that and try my luck to, well, mixed results. Believe me, I really, really wanted to like this game. I was very excited to try it. But unfortunately, at the end, I felt pretty damn underwhelmed. So what's the verdict? Graphically, I have to give this game a 4 out of 10. These graphics look like they're from a previous generation. These menus look like they're from a previous generation. I not only had frame rate issues, but I had audio buffering issues, which was just not cool and completely unacceptable for a game in 2017. Gameplay, I give this game a four, not user-friendly at all. 
It is very difficult to score points. I felt like it was a bit of a glitchy mess at times. Just not fun and, and not a game that you're going to get new rugby gamers to try, I think. Content, I give this game a four and a half. This is literally the bare minimum a sports game should have in 2017, and it's not all that great. The modes, other than my squad, don't really differ from each other, and the gameplay itself does get repetitive, as I mentioned before, especially with the constant emphasis on rucking. Overall, TSC Gaming gives Rugby 18 on the PlayStation 4 a 4 out of 10. Here's hoping that one day, just one day, rugby fans will get a video game that they truly deserve. For more information on Rugby 18, in-depth game reviews, let's plays, news updates, and everything in between, please subscribe to TSC Gaming. Don't forget to enable notifications. If you enjoyed this review, please click the like button. Please share this with all your friends. And until next time, everybody, as always, enjoy the games.